Hello and welcome to another weathering tutorial. Today I'm going to cover weathering using an airbrush and only airbrush. I'll be covering topics like dust, rust, streaking and other weathering effects like chipping and discoloration. However, I'll not be using any weathering techniques that you have watched me use before. But before we get started, here is a quick background of these models. You can see these print lines and you just start filing them. Get rid of all the print lines this way. I am not even exerting any pressure. The first part of detailing and weathering is research. I went back to the IRFCA website and found all the pictures that I could of my subject. I uh, tried finding uh, all the photos that I could where there are close up of the trucks and then I found uh, the flat cars to see what type of weathering you generally see on that type of cars. Now before you proceed, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon. Now to add some dust and dust streaking, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, this earth tone uh, mix that I have uh, created a batch and I'm going to take this uh, fade coat white and mix them in different proportion and make some pretty light dust tone and I'll do some streaking and dust deposit in the area. So primarily on the trucks, underside of the carriage and some streaking on the sides. Now this is going to be a low pressure work. So with the brush on, as you can see, it's barely moving. Uh, the dial is barely moving. So it's about five to eight PSI max. And that's all that uh, you know we need for this. So now the next step is to mix my uh, fade coat white and a little bit of earth tone to create a very light dust uh, color, uh, light dust tone. Now the next thing to notice is that um, the hood is removed. Now notice how little uh, the retraction is, retraction of the pin is, yeah. You want as little paint as possible um, while doing this at low pressure, low paint uh, weathering technique using airbrush. Notice on the paper how fine the line actually needs to be and how close um, you know my nozzle is uh, to the paper. So this is this is precisely what you need. Low pressure, uh, you know, low paint, close application uh, for the type of weathering we are going to do. Uh, you know for the for the dust effect so we'll start with the trucks now as you can see uh, this truck is left black and uh, you know just to bring some variety uh, and that will also make it easier for for me to show you uh, the technique and the effect that it has because on 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 the dark tone now notice that I'm spraying from an upward direction uh, to sort of similar dust deposit on areas where uh, that's that's flat and open to air. After the first coat, you can take it closer uh, without um, you know uh, risking to uh, get the spider effect. So because you know it will uh, the layers that come after ha will have better addition. So what I'm doing right now is that from that hole that you see right in front of that airbrush needle, I'm doing a streaking down because you would expect that on the surface of that, uh, you know, uh, on the top surface of that hole, you, you'd expect all the dust to deposit and then, you know, rainwater will take that, take that dust down. So same on this one as well. Next we'll do some dust streaking on the side. Now there's nothing but drawing the airbrush in a vertical line repeatedly. Again doing it from top to bottom actually makes a lot of difference in getting that realistic effect after the first layer uh, you know uh, just so that i don't oversaturate the paint 
what I do is I just pass air without any paint and that's the beauty of a double action airbrush so just by pressing this and without uh, you know uh, pulling the uh, needle back now I'm simply passing air on the first layer to make it dry before adding a little more paint. It looks like I'm actually using a lot of pressure but believe me this is just 8 psi so the paint is really that light at this point and that is by design because you know light at the paint and less you apply at one layer better weathering effect you're going to get in this stage. Uh, just to show some heavy discoloration and possibly some chipping I'm again I'm going to use airbrush and this uh, gray tone uh, that that I generally use uh, to to paint uh, tree bark or you know uh, something like that this time I actually have the, the pressure at 60 uh, sorry 50 uh, you know psi so it is really a very hard blast from a distance yeah so it is going to simulate chipping and discoloration of the raised parts so the high pressure and the blast actually you know gives it a very fine finish and which simulates the metallic undertone so next I have a little black. This is jet black, uh, but I have taken uh, very little here. Again, uh, what I am planning to do is the center line of the gray, uh, you know, line, I'm, uh, gray areas, uh, I'll, you know, uh, put a little bit of black just to give it a little bit more shading and dimension. Now, if you really want to do, uh, you know, some deep paint chipping, that is possible with airbrush as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm taking uh, the black paint and let's say that, you know, this is a flat bed. So generally you have those supports, uh, you know, uh, that that's put on on the on the cargo. Right. So that they uh, stay in place. So and generally paint is chipped from those areas. So what I'm doing is really high pressure concentrated black in one area yeah now just like the other uh, two models in the beginning I would also do a little bit of grime uh, using black as well now in this case I am simply uh, going to reduce the pressure to about 30 psi uh, you know bottom up yeah oh shit so if you ever do these kind of mistakes the easiest way is just immediately get to air mode without any paint and simply blend it and drive all extra paint into uh, crevices because you know that will never uh, look out of place so yeah all right crisis averted now since i don't need a lot of rust uh you know for this project i decided to make a very small batch uh you know uh, using raw sienna and then just adding demineralized water and isopropyl alcohol. Now before getting into streaking uh, there are areas where uh, there will be natural uh, rust deposit for an example uh, these rivet joints so we can add a little bit of rust uh, in there in here I don't really need to get into streaking yet
Now the way we have done it for the other two models using uh, washes or uh, tester stain, uh, similarly you would expect uh, that there is rust deposit in these areas as well, right? So places uh, in the corner where you uh, expect to uh, see, you know, water being uh, rainwater corroding uh, the metal. Uh, rust streaking is pretty precise, uh, it's narrow, you will not be able to get uh, the exact uh, profile of rust streaking uh, using a freehand technique. So what I'm doing here, I'm basically creating a rust streak mask out of a cardboard. Now to start with our rust streaking, I keep it on the stake so the effect is actually pretty subtle so you you can actually see uh, the the streaking now the challenge here is that this is a maroon uh, rolling stock so you know uh, the, the the rust uh, color will not really show through that well but uh, beside this white dust streaking, you can clearly see uh, the rust going down. And I don't really want to overdo this on this particular rolling stock because, you know, this is pretty much uh, a newer uh, one, I would say, comparatively. I don't want to put a lot of rust in this anyway. So that should do for that one. Uh, let me do a little bit of a different one here, just a single... okay fantastic so now uh you know uh, the, the side of the n is clearly you can see the rust uh, streaking on there so i have painted the stakes and now i am uh, weathering them so i doubt that um, all of them will be used in the model uh, end of the day uh, but i still thought it would be good to have them uh, ready since I'm building this as a kit. Uh, they will be detachable uh, anyway, uh, they will not be glued. I think this seemingly boring and simple set of flat wagons now have a good mix of stories. Even though they're exactly the same model, their individuality and characters can be seen clearly. The texture of 3D printing resin and the cleaning process might have resulted in some lost definition in the end result, an area that I need to take a closer look at for future models. If you have liked this video, then definitely check out the painting and assembly of the whole set and also a totally different weathering techniques that I used on the other two wagons in the set. Also, if you like that diorama, make sure to find the making of that video too. Until next time. Have fun making miniatures.